Okay, my camera is complaining that I haven't set the white balance, but I don't care. It's time for another repair video in Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. And today we're looking at the Technics SU X101 Integrated Stereo Amplifier. It's a very nice little amplifier. We have full logic control, rotary encoder volume, which I'm not too fond of, but what can you do? Push button balance, which I'm also not too fond of, but I'm just going to leave it in the center. Treble, bass, and super bass. There's only one problem with this. It doesn't work. There's no sound out of the speakers. Headphones are completely silent. So. Let's take a look inside this and see what the problem is. Right, so here we are on the bench. There really isn't much inside this amplifier. We've got a few integrated circuits. There's three here, there's a couple there, and uh, our main amplifier chip here. I hope that isn't the culprit, because if this is what's actually gone on, then I've got absolutely no hope of fixing this. And obviously there's a few more behind this board, which is where all the logic control is, and we know that works, because you saw me do it earlier. But like they say, the first rule of troubleshooting electronics, thou shalt check voltages. Alright, so I've done a little bit of research, and I think if we're going to measure if there's any power coming into this chip, we're going to have to keep in mind that this is going to have about 84 volts going through it, according to the data sheet. So these two wires here, I've probed around with my meter to make sure that those are going where I think they were going, which is the power pins of the chip, and they are, so one of these is going to carry a positive 42 volt supply, and the other one is going to carry the negative 42 volts, which adds up to 84 volts, so got to be really careful when measuring if this is getting power or not. Also another thing on the main transformer here is we've got exposed mains connectors, so I'm going to have to cover those up before I start doing anything, because I don't want to touch that when I'm doing any measuring. I don't want to accidentally touch those. Okay, so I've got all the parts where there's live mains all covered up, so I'm not going to accidentally electrocute myself. So we're going to test whether the um, amplifier chip is getting voltage. Now, these four diodes here all appear to be connected here, so I'll just put my meter's common lead on one of the diodes. So let's turn on, okay, power is on. Let's see if we've got voltage going into our chip. Let's see. Okay, we've got 40 volts. We got well, we have a negative 40 volt supply. Let's see if we got positive. And yeah, we do. So we've got about 80 volts going through that chip, which is just about where it should be. So we know this chip is getting power, and it's getting the voltages that it should get. And I wanted to do that one first because that one has the highest voltages on it, so I wanted to get that out of the way first. So now we can test all the other chips, making sure they're getting power. Now, I know these two are getting power because they're for the volume control, and we know that works because you saw me do that earlier. And we know the logic board is getting power because you saw that was working, or at least showing us what input is selected. So, I need to check these three chips here, making sure they're getting power. And if that all checks out, then we'll do some signal tracing to see exactly how far the audio signal is getting in, and we'll see where we go from there. Alright, so it's time to see if these three chips are working. Or at least getting power. So, this one here is a quad op amp. It's quite, quite simple. And we've got our power pins here, right in the middle. There's our positive supply. And on the other side is where our negative supply goes, right in the middle of that chip, so that's going to be easy to do. This one here that looks like it could be an op amp is actually a MOSFET. I know it's the strangest MOSFET I've ever seen as well, but it is what it is. So these three pins here are our source. This one right on the end is our gate, and all the ones on the other side are the drain. Which I've tried to label, but it's very easy, it's very hard to write when you've got this huge heatsink in the way. And this one here appears to be the one that's actually switching the audio signal. So I've marked the VSS and the VDD. 
We've also got a couple of other things to measure. We've got our strobe interrupts, our data, and our clock. This is what I love about the summer. It's 9 p.m. and still light outside. And yes, I put screens up against my window, stop the bugs getting in. There's just one bird out there making its noise. I call it a man bird because it's got the lowest tweet. Can't see it anywhere. Oh well, back to the electronics. And I'll stop hitting the fan with my camera. So I'm about to go poking around inside this thing. I'm not so sure about this chip actually because according to the only data sheet I could find, that's a MOSFET, but it just doesn't seem to make any sense why they would have a MOSFET there unless that's part of a voltage regulation circuit, but I've poked around with my multimeter to see which pins are connected together and it goes against what the data sheet says, but that's the only data sheet I could find, so maybe that's another op amp, I'm not sure. Let's turn this on and see what voltages we can find. All right. So I'm going to check this one here, which I know is an op amp. It's going to be really difficult to get to the connections on the other side, so I'll have to find a way to do that. And of course, it would also help if my meter was on voltage instead of resistance. So let's just start sniffing around here. Let's see what we get. Hopefully not shorten anything out. Let's turn the power on. Okay, we're getting 14 volts going in there. Let's check our selector chip. 14 volts going in there. And this thing here, let's just turn off before I do that. Move this little cap over. Now, if this is an op amp, if this is a double op amp, which I think it might be, this should be one of the supply rails, and yeah, we've got about negative one volts there. Let's just turn power on. Okay, yeah, we're getting negative 14 volts there, which is what I would expect if that's an op amp, so. The pin on the opposite corner should give us a positive voltage if that's an op amp, because most op amps, most dual op amps are wired that way. So, let's see if I can get my meter in there, and we'll be able to confirm whether this is an op amp or if it's something else. Because we've got a negative voltage there, which is what I would expect if that was an op amp. I'm just trying to get my meter on there so I can turn this on without... And yep, we got a positive voltage there, so that is an op amp. Even though the data sheet says that's a MOSFET. Now, let's see if this chip is getting voltage on the other pin. It's very difficult to see what I'm doing because I don't want to short any two pins together. Right, so it should be there, and we're getting 14.38 on that side. What would we getting on this side? And I have to keep turning the power on and off while I'm doing this because I don't want to short anything out when I'm moving wires around. I think this was negative 14 or something. Yeah, it was. So it appears that we've got two supply rails that are working. I haven't tested the other side of this op amp, which I'm going to do now. Hopefully without knocking the camera out of the way. Let's see, that's two, three, four, so that should be right in the middle. Let's see if we get a negative voltage there. And we don't. I'm probably missing the wrong pin. That's why we should be getting a negative voltage. I might just not have it on there very good. Oh, there we go. Yep, negative 14 volts. So, we know all three chips are getting the voltage they should be getting. So I think the very next thing to do is test whether this chip is... Well, you cannot see it. I just realised you cannot see it because... Heatsink. Yeah, I know, I'm very unprofessional with my videos. We need to check whether this chip is getting the data that it needs. And for that, 
we're going to need to go over to the scope. Right, so let's measure our clock and data lines. Had to put the camera at a really weird angle to get it in shot here, but this should be our clock pin, so let's see what that's doing. Doesn't appear to be doing anything at the moment. Let's press one of the buttons, see if it gets anything. Okay, yeah, yeah, it is doing something. Let's just do single shot capture so we can actually... If there is any data being sent, we'll be able to see it. Ah, there we go. Right, so that's what's coming along our clock line. So I know that's getting a signal. Let's go to the C um, let's go to the data line, see what that's getting. Uh-huh. Well, that all looks good. Let's see, so this is tape. Of course I don't have anything to decode what that's actually being sent, but yeah, it doesn't matter, that's aux. This is tuna. And this happy little fellow is fun. And I'll just measure the strobe pin, see if that's getting anything. Yep, that looks good. So it looks like the chip is getting data, so the very next thing to measure is going to be the audio path. Alright, well so far we know all the voltages are good. The chips are getting the voltages they should be getting. And we know this chip is getting the data, or appears to be getting the data that it should be getting. So the next thing to do is put an audio signal into this, and trace that audio signal and see exactly how far it's getting before it doesn't get any further. Although that's going to be in another video because I think this video is getting like it's probably a gazillion minutes long already, so that's all going to be in the next video, so until next time, goodbye. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider giving me a big thumbs up, smash that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and leave a comment if you have one. And as always, until next time, goodbye.